Hi. Hi, Shannon. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. How's your day been going so far? It's it started very, very early, but um it's it's going really well. Thank you so much. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, what a you know, when when it's a press day, it really is a day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm so, so excited to be talking with you about uh, P-Valley because it's a show that I covered um, last season and I got a chance to watch the first four this season. And it's really, I mean, it continues to be an incredible show, quite devastating as well too. all of the feels. Mm -hmm. Um, So what's it like for you when, um, I mean, just starting with, your name. I mean, Miss Mississippi, Keyshawn, do you consider you that you're playing different characters? Do you think of them as the same person? Is it like a character on a character? That's interesting. Um, I play them as two different people because Miss Mississippi is Keyshawn's uh, onstage persona. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Keyshawn and Mississippi are, are are different for sure because despite what Kishan is going through in real life like in that moment in um episode one season one where she hands the baby off to diamond she's having a very a very tough day in in her real life as Kishan, and then she walks onto the stage all that falls away and she becomes her persona miss mississippi how does that affect you in terms of, you know, there's a lot of plot lines in which the personal can be very difficult. I mean, you know, at the end of, at the end of last season, for example, you know, the, the choice that she makes, we think that she might go in one direction and she goes in a completely different one, yeah. but then that might even be necessary for what's happening. Do you feel that way? Are you happy with the choices that your character makes? No, <laughs> I'm not. Um, I, I remember reading the script for um, season one, episode eight, and just being so angry because I did not expect, I expected a happy ending for for Keyshawn and, um, and Diamond. I was really rooting for them to to just have this really beautiful love story and then that happened and um it's it's not what I expected it's not what I wanted but I think that what Katori had written was very real and that outcome is more likely to happen in real life than than the happy ending you know mm-hmm. and I had heard her describe it sort of like you're in the cage and you have the key but you're not ready to use the key yet mm-hmm. And certainly that plot line deepens when your show bravely explores the pandemic. You know, a lot of shows are, are afraid to talk about it and your show not only talks about it, but you can see that within Kishan's situation, it's really deepened and heightened by the pandemic. So what's it like to come back to the show after, you know, your first season was so well received, but you have that, you know, that tough ending. What's it like to come back? To, to pick up from um, from that moment. Yeah, and to, to build in this season, to build in not only the pandemic, but, you know, a lot of a lot of what's around us. You know, season one was sort of not particularly in a, in a time, maybe, and now we know the time. We know exactly when it is, you know? Do you feel that? They're, um, they're, they're touching on just how the pink, navigates around that and, 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 and the measures they take and, and the creativity that's involved in um, being COVID, COVID friendly there. Um, Kishan, and this is something that's very real that happens in, in, in abusive relationships where, especially during the pandemic when everything is, is shut down you don't know when you're gonna work again. So you're forced in the same space with your partner that's been abusing you. And I have read that abuse has had heightened in, during that time. So we're touching on that this season. You get to see Keyshawn at home with Derek and the babies and 
you dive deeper into the abuse that ensues. Mm -hmm. What's it like when you move the action away? You know, we see so much of it take place at the pink or in your personal life at home. But then when you sort of take the action on the road a little bit, it kind of, it jolts the viewer a bit because we're so used to the setting, which is so specific and so interesting somewhere else. So what was it like to kind of take it on the road a little bit this season? It was, you get so excited, um, especially being that I hadn't uh, played Keyshawn in years at, at that point. I hadn't played her since like 2019. So coming back 2021, I was so excited to, to work at the pink again, but then you get the script and it's like, oh, we're going on tour. So to not see the pink for a while and to have these, these brand new settings and to, to show us touring from city to city and how we're getting around town, which is, is really interesting, like our, our mode of transportation. Um, it was fun. It was different. It was refreshing. Um, it, it, was, it was really, really cool. What do you think about the fact that, you know, um, there's one scene in particular in which, you know, maybe the poster doesn't come out quite as you were expecting. Your show doesn't shy away from anything, really. It's completely honest in all of its dealings. What's it like to do a scene like that? I am actually glad Katori put that put that in there. Uh, colorism is is very real, and yeah, that's 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 all I'll say on that. I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm I'm, I'm happy that she that she touched on that because it is something that for hundreds of years has, has been an issue in, in our community. So I'm reading about you and, you know, where you're, the, the show has such a specific um, dialect, you know, from the Mississippi and, but that's not where you're from. You're not, you're not a Southerner. So in addition to everything else on the show, what's it like to kind of dive in and, you know, Pick up, pick up the 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 speech. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Connecticut originally. Yeah. A lot of my time uh, in New York. I lived in New York for 11 years, so I'm mm -hmm. very much an East Coaster. Um, and we had taken a break for a couple years, so dropping the accent and 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 in between in between playing characters who sounded very much like me and used just the, you know, the very generic accent mm -hmm. to then come back and reimmerse myself in this world and, and familiarize myself again with the, with the accent. It was, um, it was easier than it was the first time, but we had so much help. We had these amazing dialect coaches who, um, who helped us be, just super specific and, and, and accurate, helped us with the accuracy. And they also sent us videos that they had taken interviewing people who were from the area so that we could really get it as, as close to that as possible. Also reading about you getting to hear or see that you do paintings and drawings, you know, that you were drawing Odell Beckham Jr., Michael mm -hmm. Jordan. Do you get to explore that side on screen? Do you think it translates or do you consider them sort of separate? Um, I don't I, I don't think you get to see you get to to see uh, Keyshawn doing any of that, but I use all of that. That's I, I've just always been an artistic person since I was a kid. And I always love to find different ways to express myself creatively. So acting kind of, it, it all bleeds into each other. All of it is just another form of artistic expression. And even within that immersion, you know, on a show like this, hard not to talk about it, you didn't have any sort of experience, no flexibility. And, you know, I saw a video where you were able to do an incredible thing on the, with the poll. So, you know, what was that experience like to learn? Similar to um, picking up, uh, picking up drawing and, and painting, that was just another dancing was another form of artistic expression for me. Very, very, very physically 
tiring, very uh, physically taxing um, to go from, like I said, someone who had zero flexibility to being able to do not only a split on the floor, but several different types of splits on the pole um, was really, really exciting. Like being able to learn that and actually seeing myself do it, I, I just I couldn't believe it at times. Um, really proud of the the strength that I've built up uh, that I've built up this season. I'm doing a lot more of my own stunts. Um, just just really proud of myself. I've definitely come a long way from from season one to now. It's mm. it's really cool. And one thing that I hear about you all the time is that you're so warm and appreciative of the fans, of the fans of yours, that you really like to, you know, to give back to them when they reach out. What's it been like to be on a show like this where people, I imagine, have very strong opinions and they reach out? Have you had a favorite fan encounter, a favorite fan moment? Um, hmm. There are so many we have so many fans, like a big fan base in uh, Atlanta. Hmm. So this season, just being out and, and, and just being in, in, in some of my favorite restaurants or going to the park or something, there are people who just come up to me and share personal stories, which is really cool. You'll get, you'll get screamers, people who run and scream. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's all very exciting. And this is the first time because Season one, we were in a pandemic, so we were home, just on our phones, seeing how how the show was being received. So to see people in person, like tell you how the show has affected them, was really cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a great show as a viewer because I feel like everything on the show is so heightened. Yeah. You know, it never shies away, and from everything, you know, you're you're, you're thinking that you're going to be watching one thing and you watch another, and also. Uh, you had mentioned Atlanta, you know, the, the, the place, the setting is so key, you know, at the, every, the, the lights and the way it's shot, the whole show feels so immersive. What's it like for you to shoot like that? It is really, um, the way it's shot is so um, just stunning. It, yeah. And especially it's, it almost feels very kaleidoscopic. Mm. Uh, the pinks, the blues, the purples. Um, there's this moment in one of the episodes where Mercedes is on the pole and she's having a conversation upside down. And the, the way the camera follows her as she's just like slowly rotating around, I thought that was a beautiful shot the way certain conversations are shot here, the way the performances just takes you on a ride and the camera is just twisting and turning and, and you're up on the pole with the dancer and it, you feel like you're, you're in it with them. Um, just really, really beautiful work watching it back. Sometimes you don't, you don't quite grasp what's going on as you're filming it, but to, to watch it back once everything is done has, we're lucky. We're, 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 we're a lucky group of actors who, who gets to just participate in something that's just really beautiful and I think groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. I know that in season one, I'm not sure for season two, but I know in season one, you had all female directors and different ones too, with incredibly different styles. But I think it's so important that a show like this has a female gaze to it, that the, you know, the female lens really shapes it. So what's that like for you in terms of, you know, collaboration, feedback, just the feeling of having a female directed show? So both seasons mm. have all female directors, something I've never seen before. Um, I, it, there's a, a, a safety that's there. There's, um, there's a, an ease and a comfort that comes with, with uh, a woman working with a fellow woman. You, you feel like you're taken care of in a way. You feel that, I think one of the directors said this last season, like I wouldn't shoot you, 
I wouldn't shoot you different from differently from how I'd shoot myself. Like I, I want to make sure that you know you're you're shot as beautifully as possible, and you feel like the subject as as opposed to the object. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's very well said. I just wanted to say on on a personal note how much I've enjoyed hearing from you, speaking with you. I know you were incredible with the fans, as I said, but getting a chance to actually hear from you myself, I, I feel very similar. So thank you so much. Thank you.